Wow. Thanks, John. That was, uh, that was awesome. So next up, we have Mr. Lou Alvis. Lou is a fabulous guy. I know him well, worked with him. He's going to talk about principle versus law, how rules create crime, how ideas prevent them. Lou, take it away. Hey, look, they got one for me to look at, too. See all them people having a good time? Nobody is forcing them to not kill each other. See all these people having a good time? Nobody is forcing them not to kill each other. I've heard the word community come out of a lot of mouths, and community is the ultimate first form of open source government. See that community? 45, 50,000 people in a different envi difficult environment. They have about a dozen principles that prevent them from murdering, stealing, taking each other, and ruining the environment. So we know that community open sources can work. The problem is sometimes there's a big bad wolf that wants to kick in your door, eat your baby pigs, and run off with everything. Eventually people decided something had to be done about this, and we call that law. Now, the first time we got law, what I like to call Law 1.0, came from somebody who was important. He won the war, he was smarter than everybody, God talked to him, or he won the war. Seems to be pretty consistent. And each one of these guys made a code. We all know about code, right? So they made a code, a code of behavior. Now, you could not change this code. Government 1.0 was unchangeable code. But those guys kept working on their code, and it became more and more complex until hardly anybody could know anything about it unless you were some member of the priesthood of all these codes. Something had to be done. The Roman Senate, the Greek Senate, the uh, uh, Icelander guys, the all thing, their business is still around. Our own founding fathers, the Iroquois Confederation, this is the first open source government. Folks who actually talked about how they're going to govern themselves. But you get a bunch of people in a room talking about everything, and if you're not careful, the very process takes over. And next thing you know, you're not so much worried about what you were doing, but how you do it, and eventually you get more and more complex ideas until some of this stuff might not work at all. Mr. Bumble said the law is an ass because the law considered he was responsible for what his wife chose to do. He meant the law is a machine, an unthinking, dumb, ignorant thing that cannot flex and adapt itself to what needs to be done. My little boy Jimmy had a shovel, and he reached up and he was about to whack his buddy in right back and then he said, Jimmy, don't touch that boy with that shovel. He looks dejected. A couple minutes later, he's back there. This time, he has a rake. I said, Jimmy, he says, but you said shovel. This is exactly how our law works right now. If you can figure a way around it, it's not illegal. We all heard the period, the idea, spirit of the law. Let's use a simple word, principle. If you have a principle, don't hurt people. You can apply that all over the place. And yeah, he said, not this kind. And that principle, we might call it the design ideal. You're building something, you want it to function. Let the purpose of your design ideal dictate how you operate your function. And the open source world leads us to the next choice, open source government. We know that we like government to be just. Sometimes the law is more powerful. Principle to use, our justice must be more powerful than the law. There's a good reason we have judges. There's a good reason why we have other folks. Now there it is in Latin. Malum and say, wrong in of itself. Malum prohibited, wrong because it is. And there's another principle. Let's keep it simple. Take it out of a language that special folks can under cannot understand, or rather, everyone can. In America, that happens to be English, but if you're using plain language, it doesn't matter what your base language is, it can probably be translated into something you can understand. When we can understand what our laws are doing, we have a better chance at making informed decisions about them. This is a real nice one. It says, government won't make a religion, you can have your own, talk who you like to, talk through whatever medium you like to, hang out with your friends, and when things get wrong, you can come to the government and make them change it. Modern language would be a lot more acceptable. Another principle I like to use is negation. None of the above. Couple of uh, initiative petitions you don't like, they're on either side of each other. What's wrong with saying no thank you to all of them? Imagine if you could say to everybody on this current ballot, we're not having you, buddies. Give us somebody else. People talk about special rights. Here's an interesting principle. There aren't any. In America, if we're all the same, then no one can be said to have or need special rights. Everyone, doesn't matter who you are. It's a principle we can get underneath. 
like tolerance, and I don't mean tolerance for each other, I mean engineering tolerance. If a machinery is built too tight when it breaks, it fails catastrophically. The same thing can happen and has happened to our government. The one thing it does seem to manage to do, though, is have a little bit of room now and then. Now, I like this one. If we all get along together and are doing this thing together, that's fine, as long as we don't bother anybody else. And it's corollary, don't bother anybody else. As we're designing our institutions, we can keep those things in mind. These four guys all had something clever to say about it, but the one I like the best, okay, other than Mr. Jefferson, is everything ultimately is open source. Our own nation has gotten to the point now where most of us have an initiative process. It's just beginning. Open source your government. Thank you.